Hi everyone, welcome to News Roundup number 80. This is the slow version and I have to warn you in advance there's a couple of words in here that even I'm having trouble with so please excuse me if they don't work out very well. Take it away. It would appear that many Brits can't stand eating fish. A survey for the Lock Fine seafood and grill chain reports that the smell, look and texture puts people off. The Daily Mirror story says that a third of diners claimed that oysters turn them off while a similar number of people cannot face fish with their heads on. Food psychologist Dr Christy Ferguson said many people can shy away from eating fish and other foods because of the association that their subconscious mind has created. Perhaps the look of the whole fish with the eyes on the plate freaked them out as a child. Maybe the texture of seafood reminds them of something unpleasant. The study found one in five would only eat fish if it was in a fish finger while one in ten refused to touch any kind of fish. When 21 year old Sophie Gorman was asked by boyfriend Richard Lewis, 25, to go for a walk, little did she realise what was in store. The Daily Express revealed that Richard proposed to Sophie by spelling out Will you marry me using bales of hay in a field near Oswestry in Shropshire. Richard spent two hours secretly arranging flattened hay bales in the field before taking Sophie walking up a nearby hill where he then gave her a set of binoculars to scan the fields for his proposal in 15 foot letters. Sophie said, I was amazed when I saw what he'd written across the field. But it hasn't really sunk in yet. We hope to get married on the farm. It will be so special to tie the knot where Richard proposed. Richard added, I was a bit nervous because it was windy and I was afraid some of the bales might blow away. I wanted to do something original, something that would stick in our memories. 
My heart was in my mouth when Sophie used the binoculars to read what I'd written. But luckily for me, she said yes. The manager of Premier League Football Club, Norwich City, has asked two of his players, identical twins Josh and Jacob Murphy, to wear different coloured boots so that he can tell them apart. Chris Hutton told the BBC Certainly, in possession games that we might play, it's going to be more difficult to tell them apart. It's not so much in close proximity because there is a difference between the two. It's costing more to hire a babysitter, says the Daily Mail. They quote a survey by childcare search site findababysitter.com which claims that there has been a 20% rise to almost £10 an hour over the past year and that one in four unemployed parents wanted to work but could not because of high childcare costs. Thieves have nicked a Nymphaea thermium from Kew Gardens in south-west London. What is it? you may ask. Well, the Guardian explains that it is the smallest water lily in the world and extinct in the wild. The paper reports that the plant was discovered in 1987 in just one location, Mashusa in Rwanda, but it disappeared from there around two years ago because of the over-exploitation of a hot spring that kept the plants moist and at a constant temperature. And a rare fungus discovered near a former war hospital may have been unwittingly brought to the area by World War I soldiers, says the BBC. The fungi, Clavul I told you, Claviulinopsis serenoides, rarely seen in Europe, has been spotted for the first time in Scotland on the lawn at Napier University's Craig Lockhart campus in Edinburgh. Ecologist Abby Patterson says soldiers' boots may have picked up spores while tramping the fields of Flanders. During World War I, the university campus site served as a military hospital. Mr Patterson said, looking at an old photograph of First World War officers standing on the grass banking, where I found the fungi, my thoughts turned to the question of how the species arrived here at all. I thought 
of the soldiers' boots, trampling the devastated fields of Flanders, and perhaps picking up spores of C. cineroides and then depositing them on that grassy bank below the old hydropathic. I hope you enjoyed that. I just hope the author doesn't involve any more, what is it, Clavulinopsis cyrenoides again. What a mouthful. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.